So let us consider this function uh, whose uh, value is one if uh, either x or y is along x or y axis and is zero if otherwise. Uh, what we mean is this, that is, let me show you a graph. So here is a graph of the function restricted on the domain uh, negative 3 to 3 for x, negative 3 to 3 for y, and 0 to 1 for z. And you can see that, uh, you know, along these lines where x, y is 0, the function takes on value 1. Otherwise, it's 0 all over. All right. So here I wrote the function for you that it is zero if x, y is not equal to zero, zero. And that is at all these places where x uh, or y is not on the axis, it is zero. Otherwise, the value of the function is one. OK, so now if you look at the function, sorry about that, then look at this right here that if I try to, or actually not have to try to, you can see this F00 is one, okay? But if I did this, say approach uh, the origin uh, via the line Y equals uh, X, okay? Then other than at the origin, what happens? My X, Y is, uh, not going to be zero, right? Because both these values are non-zero, okay, along the line y equals x. And then what would happen is that fxy, if I take this route, okay, will approach what? Zero. Why? Because it's zero all throughout. So what did you see? That the limit of the function at zero even if exists, okay, we are not proving the existence, uh, existence or non-existence, it cannot equal one. And uh, so, so the limit does not equal one means what? The function is not continuous at zero, zero, okay? All right, so, so we see the function is not continuous at zero, zero. Now let's go ahead and compute the partial derivatives of this uh, function at zero, zero with respect to x and with respect to y. And what that will show is that uh, we may have the partial derivatives available at a point but the function may still not be continuous. And remember this, in this approach, we did not show that the limit is uh, uh, zero. We just showed that the limit cannot equal the defined value. All right. Now let us see if these two values exist. So that is the partial derivative at zero, zero with respect to x and with respect to y. Okay, so let me first make some space here. Okay, so we we showed that the function is not continuous at uh, uh, zero, zero, and this is being stubborn. So let me just get rid of it in a different way. It's out. All right. So if we did this, that is, uh, let me get my pencil, pencil activated. I'm sorry. So here. So we are going to compute this, and what this quantity is, limit as h goes to zero, f of uh, h zero minus f at zero, zero, divided by how much? h. So this is going to be limit as h goes to zero. Now, if you take h and zero as the x and y coordinates, then their product will be zero. So the value of the function is one. And here F zero zero is one, and that's divided by H. So what do we get? We get zero over H, all right, which is going to be zero. And we are taking the limit as H goes to zero. So up to this point, we can just manage to keep H not equal to zero. So no matter, you know, 
how we proceed to 0, 0, okay, keeping, uh, say, y constant, the partial derivative of x is, uh, sorry, partial derivative with respect to x is what? 0, and similarly, that with respect to y is 0. So what did you see in this case? That the partial derivatives do exist, but the function is still not continuous at 0, 0.